So the ultra-thin TV is certainly the latest example of what you can see out of companies like LG and Sony. They're going to be moving towards higher definition. They're going to be moving towards picture resolution that's much greater than anything you've seen before and going to be putting more and more of an emphasis on sleek, slim, and well-designed products that are specifically designed to catch the eye and not just in terms of what's showing on their screens. Um, it's coming in at, like you said, 4.9 millimeters or 0.2 inches. A cool thing about it is it does come with a wall mount. So that TV can be mounted against the wall in almost a floating, uh, somewhat edgeless design. Um, when it's mounted to the wall, it comes out at only about 4 centimeters. Got our new Android um, operating system platform for user interface, which allows you to pretty much do anything that you can do on your phone or imagine doing on your phone, you can now do on the TV itself. Something new that we're introducing here at CES 2015 is uh, the second generation of our curved smartphone. This is called the uh, G Flex 2, and as you can see, um, not only is the back curved, uh, but the glass is also curved. Something that's also unique to this phone in the industry is uh, something we call the self-healing back cover. And although it looks like uh, you know just a regular, normal uh, metallic cover, what it does is uh, very unique. And that is, uh, you know, it, repair, it repairs itself. It repairs itself uh, within a matter of seconds, in fact. We're in here in about 10 seconds. Do you want me to take it off and show you now? It's designed to withstand the scratches that would normally you would normally see in your pocket, you know, car car keys, coins, so forth. So those generally are not deep scratches. Takeshi Ishimura claimed that hydrogen's fuel cell technology is a societal and an economic game changer. But we're also but very excited to be the first to welcome to our vision of a uh, hydrogen society. Hybrid we hope to stay in a hydrogen society of, into the uh, sun this, yeah, this is the actual so this is a car that runs completely on compressed hydrogen. So there are no um, there are no engine parts, for example. Uh, it's a fuel cell that combines hydrogen and oxygen to make electricity. And that electricity drives the electric motor, which runs the wheel. So it operates just like a regular gasoline vehicle, but without any combustion. And without any combustion, that means no emissions. So it's a completely carbon-free driving experience. The reason you're seeing manufacturers like Toyota and other car makers focus more and more on events like CES and electronic shows is because they're trying to emphasize technology as a differentiator. At the end of the day, there's only so much you can engineer a specific car from year to year. So they're looking at ways that apps, connected features, and video and other elements can be used to help set their vehicles apart. Last year, 3D printing was very much in the concept phase, had a very limited range of applications. Now what you're seeing is 3D printing move to a space where you can create everyday household items, where you can create all sorts of things that you might use around your home, as opposed to simply those that might be novelties or for techies alone. Everything that touches your life, from your shoes and fashion to your food, 
and creations is all going to be 3D printed. I think that people have been excited about 3D printing for quite some time. What's exciting about it this year is that it's at a price point and functionality that makes it truly democratized to a point where anybody can have it at home. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, I can... so sorry, yeah.